Welcome back to Skill Cookbook for a very short episode this time about creating a D-pad or directional pad for controlling a Swift video game. So real quick, what's a D-pad? It's a structure of, or a control that we frequently have in video games that reminds me of the good old Game Boy days where we've got just four cardinal directions in which the player can move and just pressing on any of the directions on the button causes the player to move in that direction. So if you think of the front of pretty much any game controller, you've probably seen a D-pad. Of course, the challenge with a mobile game is that we don't have any hardware buttons like that, which some would argue feels less intuitive, less natural. You don't really get the good feedback of feeling the button under your finger. And uh, there are certainly people who argue against using a D-pad, for game design, uh, it, particularly on mobile games for this reason, but I personally still like them. I found that people pick them up very, very quickly. Um, people just kind of understand how to control a player using a D-pad intuitively. There's certainly other ways to go around it, like tap to move, pathfinding, things like that. But for our case, I'm interested in creating a D-pad. So let's go about it here. The interesting thing about Forever Maze as I've mentioned a few times already, is that it's 2.5D, which means that tiles are shaped like diamonds and north is at a 45 degree rotation from uh, straight up and down. This means that the, uh, as you move your finger around the D-pad, you actually want that, that same 45 degree angle to be the kind of canonical straight up or north version. So. Really what we need to do is to be able to translate um, the position at which I'm holding my finger into our cardinal coordinate or cardinal directional system, which we talked about in the last video, which is north, south, east, and west. So the first thing that happens in the code that I've pasted in the accompanying blog post here is that it logs all of the touches. And as you move your finger around the screen, so let's say you touch here, as you move your finger up to here, it now knows that you, it now has this vector here of, with x and y values. And based upon that, it can calculate the angle, theta, and based upon that, it can actually convert theta into a direction. It's all pretty simple trigonometry, actually. Um, very uh, kind of basic geometry even at points, but it ends up working pretty well and I've really liked how the D-pad has worked out in Forever Maze. I think that it may be worthwhile to support other control structures sometimes for players who don't like the D-pad structure, but in this case it worked quite well. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the videos and be sure to check out the other courses at skillcookbook.com in the rest of the series which shows how I built the Forever Maze online game.